When I started learning to use ChatGPT, I got into this mode of let's just ask ChatGPT <laughs> because it's such a weird thing where any question you ask it, it'll answer it. Any instruction you give it, it'll do it. And so it becomes a huge problem of what, what, what do I actually ask ChatGPT? And over time, I figured out a few tips and strategies and I want to share some of them with you today. If you haven't seen my other video on how to make ChatGPT smarter, those are a couple more tips. In this video, we'll talk about a specific thing, which is kind of this theme of let's just ask ChatGPT. That is, what happens if we ask ChatGPT to improve itself? Right? In the other video, we saw an example called reflection. In this video, there's a... For example, the self-improving prompt. Here, I told ChatGPT, well, you are an experienced prompt engineer, and every time I say improve my prompt, you will improve my prompt. I gave it specific pieces of knowledge that it should use. I, sell it, I tell it, well, specify the persona and their backgrounds, details on formatting, tone of voice, etc., etc. Now, the interesting thing here is that all the training data from ChatGPT is until like September 2021. But that's like ChatGPT didn't exist back then. So nobody wrote about it. Actually, nobody really wrote about prompt engineering. So it, it doesn't have a true idea of what prompt engineering is. So you're like, well, how would it be able to answer this question? How would it be able to do it? It's actually pretty good. It turns out it's, it's pretty decent at doing, at figuring out what might prompt engineering mean? And it works pretty well. So that's interesting, you know, and you only find out these things once you really start getting the hang of, let's just ask ChatGPT and see what it comes up with. So here I told it, what should I tell my boss to get next Friday off, improve my prompt. It thinks about persona, format, previous prompt, revised prompt. I did it again, right? And then it gives me like a very detailed prompt, which is good because the more detail we can give it, the better it will help us responding to our question. So to compare what comes up with the initial question and then the revised prompt, this is our baseline. What should I tell my boss to get next Friday off? It says, well, be uh, honest, clear and professional. Here's an email, follow up. Okay. When I give it the improved prompt, this is interesting because it's not giving me an email anymore. Instead, it's giving me some steps I should consider on how I should go ahead and doing it. Now, this is interesting because indeed, in our original question, we weren't very clear about what we actually wanted. Our intent wasn't particularly clear. It was just, what should I tell my boss, right? And in this case, where it was self-improving this prompt, it kind of changes into like, how should I tell my boss or what should the process be for telling my boss? Which, you know, they're both interesting answers. But it highlights the fact that it's very, very important for us to be clear in what our intent or what our goal is. And now almost always when I ask ChatGPT for help, I state what my overarching goal is or what my actual intent is behind the initial question. Now in the vein of why don't we ask ChatGPT? Why don't we ask it to try and figure out our intent, our goal? Or why don't we ask it to try and figure out what we will ask next? We can do it, right? So that's what I call the Proactivity prompt or coach mode. Proactivity prompt is where I ask it a question and then I tell it, well, after you respond to my question, try and figure out what I would want to know next and then already give me an answer. This is super interesting because it helps you brainstorm and it helps you think about, wait, what could I ask ChatGPT? Like by asking it to be creative about it and maybe it kind of have the amount of question you need to ask it because it was kind of good at figuring out what your next question was going to be. What I call coach mode is 
prompting it to try and figure out what my intent or my overarching goal would be, right? So this is what a coach does when you, you ask it like, hey, how can I get to bed on time? Then this coach is probably thinking about like, why does he want to get to bed on time? And it's trying to figure out like, no, 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 what you actually want to feel is more energy and your bedtime is okay, but you're just eating shitty food. So maybe you should start there. You know, this is the type of things that a, that a coach does. And so if you ask ChatGPT to try and figure out what your actual goal is, it might get better at that. Now, in the times I've tried this, when I'm asking it, like, what's my intent? It's kind of just repeating my own question. So it seems like it's not that good at figuring out that there might be something else that I actually want. To be truthful, this is GPT 3.5. It's probably much, much better with GPT 4, but I wanted to give all the GPT 3.5 examples uh, to show you that even on a simpler model, this actually improves the responses. So I will continue to kind of tweak that, that specific prompt and I'll add that to my prompting guide, Prompt Alchemy. Now, another thing that a coach often does is disagreeing with you. <laughs> ChatGPT is pretty bad at disagreeing actually. It tends to kind of take whatever information you give and, and kind of run with it, which is great for helping you brainstorm like, what if, uh, no. What if blood, what if all plants were blue? How would that work with the photosynthesis? And it'll just assume it's true and it'll try and figure out something. And that can give you a lot of inspiration, a lot of creative insight. But it also makes it that when you're asking it legitimate questions, it's almost never gonna be like, bro, that's a bad idea, just don't do it. And to get to that point, in fact, what we need to do is just ask it to disagree with us. And so that's an interesting thing. You can just often add to your prompt and see what it comes up with so that you get an alternative perspective on the thing that you're trying to do. So here I said, write a viral tweet thread about the future of artificial intelligence, speak like a thought leader. I said, disagree with the previous prompt and propose alternatives. Respond with a detailed explanation of why you disagree, that won't work because, list alternatives and conclude with a detailed actionable alternative. And so it, it goes to this whole explanation of, you know, a tweet thread is maybe not the best place to post this type of thoughts because it can be very nuanced, so maybe you should put it in a blog post or a LinkedIn thing. That's interesting, you know? You, you might run with it, you might not run with it. In the end, you're the human, it's your decision, but having this to generate different perspectives, to generate new ideas, to combine things that you hadn't thought about before, that's extremely, extremely interesting. If you haven't seen my other video on making the responses smarter, go ahead and check that one out. If you wanna see all this content written out with even more strategies for improving the quality and the creativity of ChatGPT, check out Prompt Alchemy and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.